Good day. It's good to see everyone here today. We're glad for our sixth conversation on uh, seven preachers, seven conversations, seven weeks about the spiritual disciplines. I'm excited today to have uh, Re Reverend Nathaniel Cox with us um, to talk about worship. Uh, so before we begin, to all our viewers, Reverend Cox, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I am the pastor of Trinity Amy Zion Church in Pittsburgh. Uh, I am married to the lovely Maggie Cox. We have been married for 15 years now. Uh, we have two beautiful daughters. Our oldest girl is 14. Our baby girl is 10. Um, and we love the Lord and we love what God has called us to do. Amen. Uh, amen. We share the same pastor, the same name of a church. You in Pittsburgh. I'm in D.C. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we're from the same soil. I think you're from North Carolina as well. You know right? it, sir. You know it. <laughs> that's it. That's right. From eastern part of North Carolina, interestingly enough. Uh, so I think you're Laurenburg area, maybe? Yes, sir. The LBG, okay. as we call it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. I'm a little further down, a little place called Delco, right outside of Wilmington. So Okay. Um, yes, sir. That's where I'm from. So it's good uh, to have you here. Um, today, we'll be talking about, like we said, worship. And um, as we begin these spiritual disciplines of worship, as we look at what worship is, as we think about who we are as Methodists, mm -hmm. um, the spiritual disciplines is something we intently look at during the season of Lent, mm -hmm. uh, but it should be with the focus uh, that it's something that we'll be able to practice with increased intentionality, even after the Lenten season. So let's just jump on in this. Reverend Cox, uh, talk about, if you can, uh, the importance of worship, even the private and public aspects of that. Amen. Um, well, Jesus said the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Um, as I think about worship, I think about John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, we have the woman uh, who comes in uh, she burst into an all-male patriarchal party. Uh, it was not the spot where she was necessarily supposed to be. They're all reclining at the table. This is, of course, before we have chairs, and they're all yes, leaning yes. against each other. And But she sensed the moment. Uh, she was sensitive uh, to the fact that Jesus was heading to the cross. Uh, his face, one text says, is fixed mm -hmm. to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the anticipation, even as we're in the Lenten season, uh, he's right. feeling the intensity of the passion. Uh, he's he's preparing to go to the Garden of Gethsemane where this, the sins of the world, past, present, and future are going to sit on him so heavy uh, that great sweat drops, uh, some would even say mingled with blood, are yeah. going to fall from his forehead. And uh, she she comes in, sensing the sensitivity of that moment, and she breaks her alabaster box. Jesus defends her. And he makes a, a, a real key statement that I think will be good, a good spot to start the conversation. He says, she has kept this. Wow. She has kept this. She right. has put this aside. In other words, this level of worship cannot happen without some kind of preservation. Wow. Uh, so there's got to be, um, when we start talking about worship, first off, uh, private worship and even yeah. public worship, mm -hmm. we've got to set aside a space of time that we give solely to Christ uh, so that we can just really lay ourselves before him mm -hmm. so that we can humble ourselves. Right. Uh, I love one, one text because uh, it's, in, it's in every gospel. Uh, right. So one text says that she broke the box. Right. Right. One, okay. one, one text says it was she was at his feet. Right. Another one says she was at his head. I tend to believe she got him from head to toe. Oh, right, <laughs> right, right, right. That covers it all, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so, so, so worship is important. Uh, in the in the private sphere, it's important for us to break the box in a way that we can't put it back in. Exactly. Uh, when I think about public worship. You know, sometimes I see that pray that performance praise, uh, right? You know, for exactly. your neighbor. <laughs> uh, but real worship is when we break the box, and whether mm -hmm. the music stops or starts, whatever place we're in, we give God the glory in a way where we can't put it back in. That's just, that's true. I like to hear you say that. Uh, so when we hear you talking about worship in that aspect. Um, we mentioned people like to do public worship. Mm -hmm. uh, it really can be a performance. Mm -hmm. um, but let's get back to that part about even how that woman was uh, intimately tied to Jesus as she was worshiping him. Yeah. How does that private worship, because I believe that when we do that private worship, that private time with God, that it will be manifested publicly. Yes, but sir. If you can talk about how the absence of private worship could impact public worship. 
Well, first off, is like you just said, being tied into God. Mm -hmm. Are we sensitive enough? Wow. You know, um, and then uh, the aspect of, you know, in worship, there should be a, a clap between the pew and mm -hmm. the pulpit, you know, right. pow. I mean, right. when, when that when that really happens, when when the man of God is set in the presence mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. man or woman of God, let me make sure I phrase that right, man or woman of God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Set in the presence uh -huh. of God. Mm -hmm and uh, picked up a deposit from the Lord that they're coming to bring. And then the people of God in like manner have been with God all week. Right. Uh, there is a climatic moment uh, in worship. Um, I think about Solomon uh, in his great worship moment whenever they uh, are dedicating the temple and it's orderly, right? It's structured. Right. It was a, right. It's as Methodist as a passage as you can get. <laughs> right. It is. It's, right. it's, it's an orderly moment. Right. Sacrifice was at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's in their regalia. They're right. doing what they're supposed to do. But all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost came in. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and and laid everybody out. Right. And the priests are all laid under the power of God. Mm -hmm. And when we spend time with the Lord and we come, um, then public you know, private worship impacts public worship and takes it to that next place, uh, as opposed to us trying to make a public spectacle. Uh, um, and that's, that's really right. what it turns out. It, it used to be. That's why I love the moment that we're in in this pandemic. Yeah. Uh, because I really believe, if anything else, in this pandemic, it has really caused the church uh, to really take a closer look at worship because I think we realize. Um, that it's not the things we do. It was, it, well, there was the processionals and the recessionals and every mm. aspect of worship. Everybody got to be in place. Like, that's nice. But yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's about that relationship. So let, let's look at, because as Methodists, we understand we have a method for worship. Yeah. Sometimes we get that confused. Um, for our viewers out here, particularly our Methodist viewers, you know, we have this outline for worship. And some people get so stuck on this prescribed outline. But it is a um, guide. It, it's not a rigid format. Like Trinity Pittsburgh don't have to look like Trinity, D.C. Could you talk awesome. about um, the importance of every local church being mm. able to express worship in a way that gives God glory that's just not uniform? Yeah, it's supposed to be incarnational, right? Mm -hmm. You know, right. Uh, Jesus put on flesh and walked amongst us. And in that moment of worship, uh, and the reason I use the term incarnational is because it should reflect Mm -hmm. uh, the flesh of the area right right you know, yeah what, yeah what what do what songs do we sing what is the sound and then right. we 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 um we we look at you know like you know mighty fortress is our god god yeah right? yeah yeah but that, you know um my understanding and and please if i got this get this wrong come in the moment drawing this mm -hmm. but my understanding <laughs> is that was a bar tune yeah um, yes exactly a lot okay of the hymns all right were, yeah. a lot of the hymns a lot of the hymns were bar tunes yeah exactly. so he, he heard this as a bar tune you know it was like when kurt franklin did stomp mm -hmm. you know um and everybody was like oh my gosh what is he doing you know when it right. first rolled out and everybody was like you don't play that in my church right and only the the trendy pastors played that right you know in their churches now it's like okay so um right. you know but at the time it was you know really uh trendy so yeah uh we we get so caught up in in rigid like mm -hmm. you were saying um, but we can really break away. And then our name is not because we're just methodical in our approach uh, to worship. We were methodical yeah. in our approach to holiness. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. you know, in making sure that we attended to, you know, small groups and we were accountable to one another. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, it's important for us not to get that mixed up and uh, to have fervency of worship that really makes a connection with God. Yes, it really makes a connection. Every person who leads worship or mm -hmm. uh, needs to have that connection. I always tell the liturgist, the worship sure. leader, um, even the, the praise and worship leaders that you lead people exactly where you are. So if you come into worship good. and you haven't been with him, you will lead people right where you are. If you're empty, you're not going to be able to lead the people anywhere. Yeah, so anywhere. you have got to be tied to something in order to lead the people someplace. Talk about how important it is uh, for leadership yeah. to exemplify worship, not just be the preacher who's just so stone cold that you never worship. Uh, not that you're the no worship not. leader, choir director, you never worship. I'd rather have a person who is anointed, may not yeah. have the best voice, but anointed, 
versus having technical skill and people aren't feeling anything. What would be your take on that or experience with that? You know, um, we just uh, dealt with the text uh, where David uh, brings the Ark of the Covenant from Shiloh to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And uh, he comes in dancing. And, you know, his wife, Michael, uh, yeah. you know, she was the king's daughter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, she's looking at, at him coming in. David's in good shape. And, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, you know, the women are on the sides there. Yeah. Yeah, David, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and she gets upset, you know, yeah. look, and she confronts him. Look at the king uh, mm -hmm. dancing before the slave. Oh, yeah. Like this. yeah. And uh, David, David says, you know, look, you know, I was I was dancing, number one, uh, before the God that made me king mm -hmm. in place of yeah. your daddy. Right. One of the shadiest verses. In all of scripture, <laughs> like right. it cuts straight to the quick. I was straight to the point right. before right. the God that made me king in place of your dad. And then uh, he then in turns uh, says, "You know, this time I look foolish to you guys, but mm -hmm. next time I praise him, I'll praise him until I look silly to myself." Wow! Yeah, wow. yeah, That's good. Yeah. Ain't that good? Mm -hmm. So, as a leader, when David comes into place. Is, is really critical to him because he is a worshiping leader. Mm -hmm. uh, his first thought process is, you know, we need to move the ark. Right. It needs to be right. in Jerusalem. And then he begins to, you know, institute and raise worship up and he leads worship. He's writing songs. Mm -hmm. He's dancing in front of the people. Mm -hmm. And that in turn becomes the culture right. you know, for the church because it is the culture of the leader. Right. Uh, so as you just stated, you know, so 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 powerfully, um, we cannot mm. take people where we're not going ourselves. Right. Uh, we've got to be willing uh, to embrace worship. Uh, to and number one, first and foremost, it's not just to have a display at church, but to have our own private worship lives at home, um, so that we worship. And um, a man of God said this to me years ago that mm. we worship and preach out of our mm. overflow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Because where you've been and what you did, that's what you're giving and expressing and the people feel like that oil that runs down Aaron's bit. It just runs and people yeah. feel it and it catches. Um, mm -hmm. David says something uh, powerful in the scriptures. He said, mm -hmm. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. His praise will continually be in my mm -hmm. mouth. Mm -hmm. And looking at that, when he says, I will, we have to look at it in every aspect, meaning like mm -hmm. it's intentional. Sometimes yeah. we got the will ourselves to praise him. You That's know, right, in this pandemic, it's been difficult for all of us, right? That's right. But I think when we hear that it says, I have to will myself to praise him. That's good. Talk for a moment if you can. If what we will and praise is intentional and worship is intentional, what are some benefits of that? Because when we put ourselves in his presence, something happens. Something well, I, I and I I well. I think uh, let me let me speak to the person that's that's listening and you're going well. I don't feel like it. Right. <laughs> let, me, exactly. let me speak to that's you know. It. That's the beautiful thing about worship. It doesn't have to be phony. Ooh, you right. know, you can bring um, a lot of the psalms are laments. Right. And David is upset. Right. He's frustrated. Yeah. He, t he t I almost quit when I looked at wow. the prosperity. Uh. Yeah. So right. um. You know. So he's expressing you know, how he feels about some of the things that he's going through. And I think when we start talking about worship, we can come before God and dump that in the worship wow. moment, yeah. you right. know, and, and really say, God, you know, I don't understand this, but you're holy. Whew. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a Job moment. Though you slay me. Mm -hmm. Yet. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I yeah. And, and, and I, and I think, you know, um, as we not think, I know, as mm -hmm. we do that, there, there hits a transition moment where the spirit takes over. Right. You know, that Romans 8, the groanings and the moanings mm -hmm. uh, that, that help us to transcend the moment that we're in. Right. Uh, the spirit of God does that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so critical for us to use um, and exercise our own uh, will and push through that moment oh, uh, yeah. and really come to God and say, God, you know, some, you know, I'm in a pandemic. I'm right this stuff this mm -hmm. is tough this is intense it's, it's mm -hmm. like i turn my tv on it's something new every day every it's day like i pick my phone up there's a new text message every day oh. yeah <laughs> uh you know there's something going on um god i don't I, I don't get it but i'm bringing it to you wow yeah yeah you know, yeah that's what right. we have to do bring it to him so he can deal with it uh, mm -hmm. i i think that is the key 
um, looking at worship, a few things I had thought about, we talked about, you know, the, I think it's imperative that uh, as we speak to the leaders out there, everybody who leads worship, yeah. I know that the pastor is responsible for organizing the worship experience. Yes. I know my own person, my own personal preference with that is because if I'm preaching from a certain point, I know how I'm seeing the flow of the service working yeah. through prayer, you know, as God would have that to be. How important it is um, for you that worship be intentional and has a flow where you're starting here and you want the people leaving in a certain aspect. How important that is uh, for you and how people should experience it when they come into the worship. Yeah, I, th I think you definitely... Um want to have a Moses moment mm -hmm. and uh, go on the mountaintop and seek direction for the flow mm -hmm. of, um, of where the, the worship service is going. Um, now, uh, you know, of course we got to be open to spontaneity, spontaneity yeah, and uh, to whatever God may have in that moment. Um, and, and that's also kind of critical, you know, sometimes you go into a worship moment and you've got a plan and you're, and where you Ooh, yeah. laid yeah. out, but it's like, all right, God, where's that? There's something here that I don't know right. what you're getting ready to do, right. but I'm looking for it. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I know sometimes I have that moment in a worship service where it's like, aha, there it is. It <laughs> you is. know, uh, there it is. That, that I would say moments. birthday yeah. moments. Yeah. It, it, I had two experiences one okay. time I thought was funny. I remember one time I stood up, I got to the pulpit. You ever get a dry season? Uh -huh. I remember getting to the pulpit and I was just like, I don't have, I, I didn't have anything. Yeah. And I got there and I literally was saying, May the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Mm -hmm. And I remember praying, I need a word. And I know people's out there, oh, you gonna pray. I really needed a like, I need God to speak. Those yeah. were that was one of the most powerful moments. Wow. Uh, because I wasn't dependent on myself. Mm. Um, I think I was open. I had to be open and dependent upon him. Um yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when you said that, that was just like a wow moment. And you know, we have those, even when you got a good summer, great sermon, and the service is so high, and the Lord said, Don't preach that today. You're like, I want to. It, <laughs> service doesn't happen, right? Um, how important it is, you mentioned that for preachers, worship leaders, how, and you said it, but I really want to hit this point. How important is it for worship leaders? to be sensitive to the spirit, to know you may have had a plan, but it's time to move. Like, yeah. How important is that? Yeah. I, I was just listening to a man of God this, this, this week. And, um, you know, I try to take in a certain amount of sermons for myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the messages I was listening to, the man of God uh, just made, highlighted the fact that, that he is the bridegroom. Mm. You know, that he, you know, is, is, this is his bride. Yeah. And we're just we're just there to help, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we're just a groomsman, you know, so. Um, so, uh, it, you know, as a as a pastor, I've got to make sure that I don't that I'm a marriage counselor and I'm not trying to marry his bride, wow. that I'm assisting right. them mm -hmm. getting to that point to where they hear him. And whenever they hear him, I need to give space. You know, yeah. I always think about that. You know, sometimes there's that moment in worship where that hush hits yeah, or, yeah. or people are just offering worship to God. Yeah. And if we're not careful, there's a temptation to, to quickly insert yourself in that. Cause you know, we don't like, we don't like quiet, you yeah, know, exactly. we don't like, yeah, yeah. we like to, something's supposed to be happening, you know, All and I've time. seen preachers insert themselves there and it's like, whoa, 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 God is speaking to them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to disturb that because God can do so much more. We're trying to get people developed. We're trying to see them mature in the things of God, but the spirit is, mm -hmm. is, is who does that work. Right. And when he's talking and we disturb that work, we're slowing up the progress. Wow. Wow. That's good. You know? <laughs> we are. We do that a lot. Um, as we prepare to close, what mm -hmm. during this season, I think the church has shifted in such a way that I don't think we've known the full parameters of the shift that the church just experienced. My but if there's, if there's one thing for even your church and the body of Christ, what is the, maybe, maybe one or two thing that you hope has shifted in the worship experience um, 
even because even with us as as being a Methodist body, I think there's certain things we used to do we can't go back to. We just will not go back to. We can still be Methodist and have the form of, of worship, but what will be the the thing you pray that the body of Christ is open to for worship uh, as we move into this new season? Okay. Now you, that's a doozy. Mm. <laughs> I was, I, you know, um, being open to pivot, that, okay. that we keep that, you know, open to being adaptable and ready to change and shift. Um, now, of course, being anchored in, in the, the, the crux of the gospel, in, mm. in, in the Apostles' Creed, in the death, the burial, the resurrection, those principles, you know, uh, but being ready to make the necessary uh, shifts. Um, mm. You know, the church is real slow sometimes uh, to, to change um, when it needs to change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I think that's that's one piece. Okay. Um, okay. That's I don't good. know if I got a number, another, no. another two, because I don't want to just answer quick. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, one. no. And it could be yeah. just, just that one thing to think about, because, you know, my, my hope is that we don't confuse worship with formality. Yeah, um, I think, you know, the church needs to be in a place where particularly the Methodist, Methodist church that, that there are certain things that we do that we will keep um, that we know uh, uh, gives a sign to the world that we are Methodist. But if we learn anything just to be more open to the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, you I was know, say, there's my number two then Okay, <laughs> okay. My, that we that we understand our why to those things. Right. Yeah. You know, so so that we're open to change what needs to change, but for the things that that are not going to change, that we get back to the why, mm -hmm. uh, that we understand our narrative, um, because uh, specifically for you know the Amy Zion Church, you know we sit at the crux of this moment, historical moment, mm -hmm. you know, um, with with liberation being the need, uh, with mm -hmm. the need for the gospel, we are in the midst, <laughs> like we have both right. of those things. So for us to really understand. Uh, who we are and be prepared to to push into you know this historical moment and give them what God has placed on the inside of us. Wow, um, that's good, Reverend. I I really have enjoyed um, the conversation with you uh, about worship and know the good things that you're doing up in the Pittsburgh at, at church. And we pray that God will continue to bless you and your ministry. Um, just final words, anything you would like the viewers to know in particular as it relates to the spiritual discipline of, of worship, um, not just during Lent, but even afterwards. Any final words? Yeah, you know, enjoy it. That's what I would say. I would mm -hmm. enjoy uh, the presence of God. In the presence of the Lord is mm -hmm. the fullness of joy. Uh, when we hear a word like discipline, um, it, and I always used to think about this with the with the word class leader. Right. You right. know, it was like class, school, homework. School work. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, um, you know, when we hear a word like discipline, we think, oh, man, this, this is going to be horrible. No. Uh, yeah. Enjoy God's presence. You know, right. uh, David talks about, you know, in a Psalm one, uh, excuse me, 27, where he says mm -hmm. one thing what I've desired, that will I oh, seek after, that I may dwell yeah. in the house of the Lord, Lord. all yeah. the days of my days life, of my life. Yeah. to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Yeah. So, you know, take the time, sit in God's presence, worship him, inquire of him, receive mysteries, let wow. God unfold your life to you. Mm -hmm. And um, and then just gaze at his beauty as we as we worship. Um, and and it's, it's a twofold thing. I think mm -hmm. it's why we do it and then why we run from it at the same time. Right. right. He right. pulls the covers back and we see him. But mm -hmm. when we see him, sometimes we see some stuff about ourselves we don't like. Which Whoa. is why we get <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, that last week. Yeah, we don't want to deal with that. We don't want to yeah. deal with that. But we see some stuff we don't like. I threw that, I put that in the sermon last week. It was a, a, a aspect in Narnia where it was, if people ever watched that movie where oh, as them, the it, you were seeing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it that <laughs> lion where uh Eustace, I believe, uh, was a little boy, was but was a dragon. Yes, sir. And he wanted to be a boy again. Yes, sir. And it was kind of like Aslan said, you know, you can't take this off, but what needs to be removed is gonna hurt a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. And he stripped them off and it was in that water, he became a, a boy again, but it hurt. Yeah. It hurt. Mm -hmm. um, That's sanctification. 
Oof. Yeah. That's and it happens worship. in worship. <laughs> it happens in worship. Right. Yeah. That's what worship will do. It will put a light on you that it will reveal who you really are. Yes, mm. sir. <laughs> yeah. And God wants us to be better people for him. Man, this was good. I pray that the viewers out there, will, I know you got something from this. Um, we know that you will be blessed. We pray that you have a, a, a worship experience uh, that will continue to demonstrate the glory of God. Uh, Reverend Cox, uh, how may the people reach you? Uh, I know you have various social media platforms, but how may how may they contact you if you want to talk with you a little further? Um, uh, they can uh, tune in. Uh, you know, of course, they can uh, uh, mm -hmm. check us out. Uh, Trinity Amazon Church in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. um, on on Facebook. They can go to um, you know my Instagram page, uh, Pastor Nate Cox. My Twitter page, Pastor Nate Cox. Yep. Uh, my Snapchat page, Pastor <laughs> Nate Cox. Uh, and uh, you can get up with me at any of those points. Amen. That's great. Uh, so you all heard that. You can reach out if you have any uh, questions. The brother doing great work um, in Pittsburgh. Uh, we pray that you all enjoyed this. We know that you did. We look forward to seeing you uh, next week. That will be our last week of our conversation. Um, our, our seventh uh, conversationalist will be uh, the Reverend Hannah Brooms of the Dunlillington District. Uh, man, we will talk about the spiritual discipline of study. Study. Amen. So um, we look forward to seeing President of the Broom here next week uh, mm -hmm. with us to close us out. So Reverend Cox, thank you so much for this. Uh, could you close us out in prayer? Absolutely. Amen. Let us pray. Uh, gracious God, eternal Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you that we can come before you in worship. And as we consider worship, Father, we reflect upon the Old Testament. God, that every time they worship, something had to die. Now, Father God, we thank you that as New Testament believers, we lean upon your death, upon yeah. your burial, and upon your resurrection. And because the blood that you shed, we're able to come into your presence and lift up holy hands. Mm. Father, oh, uh, what grace we often forfeit, all because we don't take the opportunity to come before you in worship, to come before you in prayer. So, Father God, we just pray, Father, that you would ignite in your believers a fresh fire a fresh anointing, a stirring and a turning yeah. on the inside that we yes, will come God. before you in worship. As we move closer uh, to Easter, God, God calls us to be in tune mm. uh, with your passion, Father. Uh, even as the old hymn writer said, were you there uh, when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes it causes me yeah. to tremble. God mm. calls us to tremble again. This yeah. is our prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing all the viewers next week. Um, have a wonderful day. All right. Y'all take care.